the flare there to uh, Darrington. So here is the new Buffalo quarterback, Anthony Brown, handing off to Frank Gore Jr. Another nice run for Frank Gore Jr., picking up a first down. And, and we talked about this earlier, but the challenge has been met, I believe, by your quarterbacks, Danucci and Brown. Tough situations for both, but they've represented well, and we'll see what Brown can do now. Yeah, it's, a, it's great to get to see him. He's done a great job coming in here this week. Ben got here the week before. Uh, never ideal to be signing a couple quarterbacks within six days and having to you know learn learn enough of the playbook and and go out and execute. But I thought Ben did a really good job. I thought Joe Brady did a nice job of getting some plays um, that worked with what we were dealing with. Obviously, the first couple drives are going against their number one D. Deion Kane showing up again, another reception for Kane. And Brandon, we talked about this with you yesterday when we met, but you've had some injuries this summer. It's forced you guys to do some different things. But as you pointed out, the injuries have been to some newer players to the organization. How does that complicate the challenge? Yeah, it's, um, you know, you're, it's one thing. And, and the example we were using yesterday is, you know, we're missing a couple of safeties. You know, Cole Bishop, our second round pick. Mike Edwards, who's done a, you know, had a great career, has won a couple Super Bowls. You bring him in here, but both of them are new to our system. Mike is a, is a vet. Um, get out of there. But Brown sacked. So you know it's hard because if you know back in the day, you know we had I think last year, year before, Mike and Jordan missed some time in preseason, but we had, you know, they had the bottom of the roster. You need, you know, do you take a return guy from the defensive side of the ball to the offensive side of the ball? And Sean was even questioning like. What kind of body type? Do you want a running back back there, a guy who can break tackles, or do you want more of a fleet foot, smaller type guy? Some of those questions have to be answered as well. Yeah, it's uh, we're obviously still learning this position. Um, you know, this is the new kickoff rule and limited, you know, number of, of returns with only three games of, of realistic stuff. And, yeah, it is, you know, it's sim it's more similar to the punt return play than the old-fashioned kickoff. But, um, yeah, you're still figuring out those body types. It's probably the ideal one's probably got enough size but enough juice to still hit, you know, hit the right. home run. We're going to see a punt here from Sam Martin. You told us earlier in the summer, Brandon, that, that you, as you redid the wide receiver room, you've had more size than you've ever had before. What do you like about that wide receiver room? Yeah, I mean, obviously a lot of new parts there. Losing Steph and Gabe this year. Shakir's the, the one returner. So just trying to find different pieces to give Joe Brady and, and Josh different mismatches for the, you know, the varying defenses we're going to play week to week. And uh, whether it's playing against weather, playing against people who are going to play press man or guys that can find holes in zone. So uh, we did add some size in Keon, Matt Collins, and all the A little bit of that twitchiness come back. What have you seen from Vaughn over the summer? Yeah, I mean, we're trying to be smart with Vaughn, obviously, year two off the ACL and, and plus his age. But um, I think Vaughn's done a great job of coming out, showing the pass rush stuff that we want to see, the twitch, the explosiveness. We did put him in the scrimmage that we had, the practice scrimmage with Pittsburgh, just to give him, instead of just going against our guys, knowing we weren't going to play him in the preseason. And I thought he had a pretty good day. Uh, won some, lost some, but we're looking, you know, his leadership's great, and to, just to be able to add him and see, you know, something that we saw a couple years ago, you know, is refreshing. Yeah, no, I been watching him even at the last part of last year and I thought I still think Vaughn's got a lot of good football left in him and you know snap counts going to be a big issue with him this year but also his mentorship and his leadership as you said is a big part of what he brings yeah I mean obviously we drafted Javon Solomon who's you know more Vaughn's body type but um, just what he brings there teaching guys I mean he does his own pass rush and summit that we all know about a lot of guys look up to him he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. So to not only have what he can bring on the field, but to pour into these young guys. And he loves that part of it, and, and that's an added bonus for us. Daquan Hardy just made a nice play there on that tackle, and he's certainly involved in the return game competition. Where does that stand in your eyes right now? Yeah, we're trying to give him as much as we can, uh, just being a rookie. And and he, he fields it cleanly, does a good job there, just working on his decision-making, um, hitting that hole, you know, Sometimes these guys want to dance a little bit, but just giving them as many reps as we can. And then last week he got to play a lot of defense, you know, had his hands on a couple of them and, you know, almost came down with a pick or two. But uh, it's, it's good to see him back out there today and just, you know, continue working on his fundamentals of, of corner. You've also got some guys that are really interesting. Gable Stevenson is on this team. Uh, he was just in there, put some pressure on the quarterback. Uh, you've got some interesting guys on the defensive line that are really trying to, to make a play to get on this roster. But it's a, and it's a part of your team where you keep, they rotate a lot of guys through there. So you do need a stable of pass rushers, a stable of defensive tackles. What are your thoughts on this group and how they fit? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, we definitely we, we like to be as deep as we can there, just knowing, you know, you got to get after the passer. You you know, to win in games, obviously you got to stab. So uh, I like the different guys we got. We're going to have some tough decisions there. Uh, there's there's some deep, you know, especially on the edge. Where, you know, we've got some guys that have played for us that are fighting for, you know, one of those last spots. So today's evaluation will, will keep, you know, factor into that. The evaluation is really difficult when you've got this camp more than any I can remember. You have different guys just dropping out because of a minor soft tissue. You know, calf here, a hamstring there. It's just been really difficult to get any consistent reps from any of these guys, or at least at the top of the roster in some positions and the bottom of the roster in others. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's unfortunate as part of it. Sometimes it happens. Some years you get through a lot cleaner than others. This year it feels like. Uh, we did have some things sneak up on us. A couple, like I said, the Mike Edwards and Cole Bishop have been most of camp. And then we've had some other guys, uh, one of the other draft picks who's out here today, Eddie Ulifoscio, uh out of Washington, unfortunately missed a lot of spring and then missed, um, you know, missed some of it with a rib injury here in camp. So good to get Every time they announce his name after a tackle today, the fans go nuts. What have you seen from Buffalo Joe? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a cool story uh, anytime you have um, nine. And then when you add on top, this guy played right down the road at Lancaster High School. And, you know, my boys played football here at, at OP High School and played against Lancaster. So a lot of respect for their program. And so um, it's cool to, you know, as you said, when he came out of the tunnel, the first tackle he makes in the game, the place goes nuts like he's a 10-year <laughs> vet or something. But credit to him. Uh, he, he's done a great job. Doesn't say a word. He just shows up, doesn't tell anybody who he is, and just, just you know, makes plays. Eight tackles today for Andreessen. That was just a bit short of a first down, so third and one coming for Carolina. Give us an idea, Brandon. Obviously, cut down day is Tuesday at 4 o'clock. From now, the end of this game, to then, what is your process going to look like? Yeah, we're going to uh, – obviously, we were just talking about injuries. We're going to talk through the medical report, especially after this game. Do we have any – you know, do we get out of here clean or do we have some issues? Make the play here. Oh, oh Kyron Brown almost had it. Read it well. Uh, so, let's get our medical report, and then let's look at the guys that definitely are, you know, expect to be on the roster – are we covered? Who, you know, is anyone not going to play week one? Are we going to have, you know, something that we think we can get the practice squad to play week one, or do we need to keep somebody extra to a different position? And then obviously start going down, to, you know, to the last few spots. Do we want to keep, as you said, is your returner coming from the offensive side, the defensive side? When you peak, when you go extra, if you go a heavy D lineman, where are you pulling that? Are you pulling that from the linebacker room, the DB room, or even on the offensive side of the ball? So just kind of going through all those machinations and just. Talking through every scenario, listening to coaches, uh, you know, my personnel staff, and just trying to make the best decisions we can. And then once you make that cut, you see whoever, you know, who everyone else cuts. And is there someone that got put on the street as a veteran or, or that we would want to make a waiver claim to still swap out of the, uh, you know, the initial 53 on Tuesday? And that waiver claim, and, and a lot of fans have the wrong idea. They say if you just want a guy, all you have to do is go out and grab him. Actually, you kind of have to wait your turn, right? Yeah. And yeah. as successful as this team has been, you know, four straight division titles, there's a lot of teams that get to choose their guys before you get to choose yours, and that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, it's a good problem to have. Uh, it's, it's better for job security when you're, <laughs> yeah. when you're picking in the 20s than uh, when you have your pick of the litter. So uh, I'll take this, uh, the, you know, where we're at. But, yeah, you just you do the best you can. If you think there's a guy, you do it. Maybe if you if you really want the guy bad enough and you feel like he's not going to get through waivers, maybe you can swap a late pick or something. Right. One man I want to ask you about is the guy in our booth to the left, and that's uh, your new officiating consultant, John Parry. What has he meant to the organization so far? Yeah, a lot of respect for John. Um, you know, he, he had obviously a great career as a, as a head official. And, you know, the head officials in our league, even though as, as fans or our, myself, we get frustrated when they miss calls and things like that. Um, John has always been a pro. I know he's done some Super Bowls and just – um, we we actually brought John on board a few years ago in a consulting, you know, not in the role he's in, working basically remote. We'd bring him in a little bit, but just kind of helping us understand each week going through the fouls that were called, the ones that weren't, um, things that are hot topics in the league, points of emphasis, you know, just, you know, you get direction from the league office, but sometimes just dumbing it down for us. Right, it. Did not hold on. Yeah. Just dumbing it down for us or, or just kind of hitting us with some of the things to make sure we're on top of the new trends, where things are going. First game, we had a couple of challenges and, and nailed those, and I know John, you know, led the way on that. You spent 
19 years in the Carolina Panthers organization, and now their general manager is a man you know very well, a man you actually saw last night. And Dan Morgan, how about the, the you opportunity got a rookie for and your then pal, a, Mr. Morgan, with Carolina? Yeah, it's a great opportunity for Dan, and, and he's such a good man, good family guy. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to get him here from Seattle when Brian Gain went to Houston for that GM job. And so um, for him to help us, you know, continue size, he was here, you know, several years of, you know, helping us, you know, win these divisions. And then left for Carolina a couple years ago, named the GM this past year, and, and I'm so proud of him, happy for his family. And he'll do a great job. You know, it was good to see him last night, stop by the house for a minute. And, uh, he, he's going to do. He's going to do great, and you know it's cool to. You're always rooting for your buddy, especially someone that was help. You know, helped us get this. Thing Obviously, going you got in a Buffalo. Right. Helps that he's to get after him, get him off the spot, get him on the ground. It's easier, easier to feel good about. Him, easier yeah. to do business with. Uh, <laughs> glad he's not in our division. <laughs> Further on, it gets in the end zone. They will go for two with 7:01 to go in the third quarter. And the rookie Plummer two. remains the quarterback. Steps up, and there's the two for the Panthers. Well, Brandon, we know you have a busy few days ahead. We always enjoy your visits here in the preseason. Thanks so much, and good luck this season. Appreciate, appreciate you guys. Okay, Brandon Bean, the Bills general manager. Joins reps and get comfortable with each other, but they still have to do that. The Frank Gore Jr. show continues, and he is running well. you got to think that he's got a, a really good case to stick around on the practice squad. Yeah, at least the practice squad, if not – if not more, he may be one of the guys they protect. But certainly, there are also guys, if you look at the way the Bills have played, he's led this team in rushing through the preseason. And sometimes that doesn't say too much, but it does say something. And it's impossible to know the thoughts of 31 other NFL teams. And when you expose Frank Gore to some play, there might be a number two running back spot or a number three running back spot on another team that Frank Gore would fit perfectly into. 12 carries for Gore for 78 yards. Play fake here. Brown on the move. He's going to keep it himself across the 25 and dances his way inside the 20. And that is what Anthony Brown is capable of, a run of 13 yards. I'm not saying anything. I'm, I got a lot of love and respect for Anthony Brown, but that's exactly the kind of play that got Josh Allen pulled out of a preseason game against Chicago. Anthony Brown is not going to get pulled from this game, and he knows it. Uh, he wants to look as good as he can and make the plays that are there to be made. That was an excellent run. He didn't take a huge hit, made a couple of guys miss, kept his team on the field, and that's exactly the kind of play he was brought in here to make, and that's what you know, Sean McDermott, the coaching staff, need from him. Brown to Zach Davidson, who was lined up in the backfield, and he stretches out close to the 10-yard line. Injury update, here's Matty Glab. Running back Darrington Evans, who scored Buffalo's first touchdown of the preseason, suffered a hamstring injury. He will not return to today's game. Andrew? Okay, Matty, thank you very much. So you'd expect that we're going to just see Gore Jr. the rest of the way. Absolutely, but I'll say this to a guy like Evans, that has been the bane of this training camp. We've talked about a lot. Soft tissues, calf pulls, hamstring injuries, all that stuff. Even Matt Milano's pec injury. Gore gets a first down. Out of bounds at the five-yard line. First and goal for Buffalo. And a lot of, and, and there's really no explaining it. Uh, these guys are in great shape. Certainly they play on the edge of intensity a lot. In fact, Old timers prop like me probably won't like to hear this, but I think the way they practice these days is m at a much higher speed than they did in my day, but with less physical contact, if you get my meaning. So they spend a lot more time running fast across greater distances and in better, sp more space than they did in my day. But in the back in those days, it was more physical. You were banging into each other. It was a much different type of practice. First and goal, a pitch to Gore at the five. Gore Jr. trying to get in, and he does! Frank Gore Jr. with the Buffalo touchdown. Well, he really well executed. You got put your garage out in front. You got a you got a great job as these guys, you're gonna watch these guys get out in front here and just clear the way. Gore makes his one cut. He knows he's going to have to accept some contact from the secondary, but all he needs is a half a yard at that point, and he gets it. K.J. Hamler with a nice block as well. 
you know, I, you know, I know, I, I know Frank Gore a minute, a, a, a little bit, but what Dad wouldn't be proud of? They know that, that that is a dog run right there. He put his foot in the ground. He knew he was going to get around the inside of his block, and there was going to be a couple of guys waiting for him in there, and there was absolutely no hesitation, and he won that battle to get into the end zone. Buffalo now lining up to go for two. But they're going to take another look to make sure Gore Jr.'s knee was not dead. Yeah, you see Brandon Bean standing up here kind of hoping. Yeah, you hope him, you want him to play well, but if he's not going to be on your roster, you don't want him to go someplace else. You'd love to have him come back here and at least be on the shelf in case you need him. So the Bills going for two. Brown to the end zone, and it is caught. With a flag down that Xavier Johnson reeling in the two-point play. This is coming from the back of the end zone. We'll see. It might have been. Yeah, they, it's a holding on the defense. And this will stand. That's a good two-point conversion. Second one of the day for the Bills. And the fans here at Highmark Stadium with a big ovation for the Buffalo offense as they come off the field. Illegal use of the hands in the face, number 39 of the defense. The two-point try was good. The five-yard penalty will carry over to the kickoff. And here you go. Nice catch in traffic. Johnson, the undrafted rookie from Ohio State. One catch in the first two preseason games, and now a two-point conversion to his name. And then they got the five-yard penalty that will be added on to the kickoff, as you heard. I don't know how that changes things. It's a lot different penalty than it was previously. It means, no, no, it means nothing to anybody except the kicker. He's got five yards less to kick it. And that's, you, you got to think it, because they're not lined up five yards closer to the returner, I mean, the, the front line guys still are at the 40 yard line. The return guys are still at the 35. The penalty doesn't, now this is crazy. It doesn't affect anything. And this is one of the issues, you know, and maybe they'll look at this in the future, but this penalty is one of the few that you'll see that is absolutely irrelevant. Yeah, it's certainly one of the adjustments is, is this type of situation as Bass chips one down to the one yard line. And on the return, Carolina takes it out to the 30 yard line. Time now for our Imagine Staffing player resume. Here in Buffalo has ascended to the coordinatorship and did a nice job down the stretch last year to get him in the playoffs. Sheridan on the carry. And he gets two yards on the play. Andreessen is still out there. Branson Dean also helping out on the tackle. It's interesting about, you know, Joe Brady. There was a lot made about how the offense was going to change under his tutelage. And certainly they did run the football 52% of the time down the stretch last year. This is still a team that thrives in close games. It's been 40 games, regular season games, since the Buffalo Bills were beaten by more than six points. Or eight points by by a single possession and they're just hard to beat and Brady's a part of that offensively as well as the defense that you know holds the other team down they were here we'll see how it goes full time on the outside that pass is caught and the tackle made by Edifuan Yuli Foscio fifth round pick out of Washington who did not play against the Bears in the yeah Uli Foscio they sat on the slot they, they broke the formation put the tight end off the line of scrimmage and out away from the, the box. Ula Foscio having to play in space. Does a pretty good job there, even though he gave up the reception. It'll be third down and three when we come back. That's the end of the third quarter. Carolina 25. But this is in case an official gets hurt. And they're going to do the rest of this game, the fourth quarter, with only six officials. And that's an easy call right there, I think, for any official. Yes. Jalen Coker on the touchdown reception, the undrafted rookie out of Holy Cross for 36 yards. Right at the top, see working there against Chiron, and just gets around him. It's perfect throw, perfect catch. 
Plummer to Coker. And the Panthers are lining up to go for two. Something like that. Which I guess. That's what the math is for. Yes, but in the preseason, it's A, the preseason, and B, there's yes. no overtime in the preseason. That's right. But you do it for the game management and to see short yardage instead of field goals or extra points. Plummer keeping the play alive, and now we'll just throw it off the upright. <laughs> Well, Carolina there. Get in the end, gets in the end zone, and Isabella and Hardy are the deep man for deep men for Buffalo, and it'll be Hardy who downs it in the end zone. Time now for our Wegman's Spotlight. Wegman's Meals to Go, delicious meals delivered. Download our app today, and how about the day for Frank Gore Jr.? Really ran well, averaged six and a half yards per carry, a long of 17. He got into the end zone on a really tough, hard-nosed run, but he knew he was going to be a workhorse, and he really came to play. I mean, the guy really runs physical. And I'll tell you this, too, not for nothing. That ball did not hit the ground at all. And when you're talking about the preseason and things that coaches look for as much as anything, it's just ball security and doing the basic things well. Fundamentally, he's as good as they get. Here he goes again as he's trying to go over 100 yards rushing on the day, but Kenny Dyson makes the tackle. Frank Gore Jr. rushed for 4,000 yards in his career at Southern Mississippi. That's the third most in school history. Last year, over 1,100 on the ground to go along with 10 touchdowns, and that included a 247-yard day against Appalachian State. And having a joke with James Cook. He's the only running back James available look, right now, look, I think. James Cook telling me, you look tired. Yeah. Easy for James Cook to say that. Brown completes it to Davidson. And he's tackled a couple of yards shy of a first down. And so Sean McDermott telling us that he would have loved to have played the starters in this game. But with all the yeah. injuries, the Bills just did not want to take any chances. And... So that's why you're not seeing Cook. You're not seeing Ray Davis, Davidson next to Brown on third and three. Brown over the middle, and it's caught by McKitty, who does a nice job after the catch into Carolina territory to the 43. We have meetings with Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott in the days leading up to the game, and they give us their idea and their philosophy. And I think one of the things when they started signing, you know, Anthony Brown and Ben DiNucci, you know, when the injury started to take a toll on how they were going to approach these games, it was, I think, the most surprising thing to me about those meetings was Sean McDermott's disappointment that they did not get to play their frontline players in these preseason games as much as they wanted. And I thought that was surprising to me at how disappointed he was that they didn't get any reps or enough reps with those guys and able to because of the injury bug this preseason. Now, it's not always the case. You know, they don't always want to play their guys a lot. But this year, I think because of the new faces, they had plans to do that. And those plans were thwarted by the fact that they just didn't have enough healthy bodies. Yeah, and as both McDermott and Bean pointed out to us yesterday, they were planning to have Josh Allen play last week. But with that rainstorm we had in Pittsburgh, they just did not want to take any chances as Davidson makes a nice catch with one hand. Zach Davidson, who's pushing to make this roster, makes a nice play. A yeah. gain of eight. Davidson, for as big as he is, a 6'7", 250-pound guy playing tight end and has made some catches like the one you just saw. And this is, uh, make no mistake, this is an elite catch. He pulls this thing in and gets the ball. He is really good at this kind of thing. In the passing game, the short passing game, and getting down the field, really good. But there are other parts of his game, the blocking in the running game, special teams, he's not a, really a contributor. Those parts of his game are not there. Brown taking a shot down the sideline, incomplete, intended for Demir Bird. But with, you know, with the situation on the roster and the things we've been talking about, and you know, Quentin Morris going down with an injury, there might be some space for a guy they need to start the regular season. Zach Davidson might see the door open for him with catches like that. Davidson a year ago suffered a knee injury in mini camp, so he was on IR all year. The prior season, he spent time on Buffalo's practice squad, so the Bills are familiar with Davidson. 
And he's had a chance here this summer. Frank Gore Jr., his break time is over as a flag comes in from behind the play. Gore has gone over 100 yards rushing on the day. We'll get a chance to see our guy, Greg Meyer, make a, a penalty call. Checking with Carolina to make sure they want to take that penalty, and they obviously would. Interesting. I think that's no microphone. So Kevin Jarvis is called, but he still he still said the number. He, he did say the, the number, number which is nice. nice for you lip readers out there. Nice for everyone except for Kevin Jarvis. Let's check in with Maddie. There's one player on this offensive line who was the perfect fit for Buffalo even before the Bills knew his name. It's center Keaton Bills. Yes, his last name is the same name of this team. It's a match made in heaven. Bill says people love to shout, let's go Bills, when they see him in public. He says he's had some fun with it too. Nah, it's just an all-timer, Maddie. Thank you very much. Bills, the undrafted rookie out of his team in the preseason as Anthony Brown takes the snap is it seems as though the culture that Sean Junior's Turner knee has was not you know, cultivated down. here in Buffalo has made a difference for a lot of the younger players. Certainly, it's been an environment where many players have developed greatly. Um, McDermott told us in, in training camp on, on the radio, he never wants to have a player come through this building, meaning one Bills drive, and play their best football somewhere else. And certainly the environment here has been conducive to a lot of guys doing exactly that. Resume. See what Bass can do so a 51-yard field goal attempt. This would be his longest of the summer. Kick on the way, and it is no good. Drifting off to the right. His first field goal miss during the preseason schedule. He's now six out of seven. Oh, with quarterback Josh Allen. Yeah, uh, it's been great. Josh is amazing. Uh, you know, the talent level that he is, to still be down to earth, to still want to hang out with the guys, to still want to invite the guys over to the house all the time. Delaney comes off and uh, seems to be none the worse for wear, although it's easy for me to say. Yeah. Now, there's a lot to unpack with the interview Maddie did with Matt Collins. I know a lot of attention is, is paid to the, the bare feet, but I actually personally have a bigger problem with him. Well, an interesting guy, but as Maddie pointed, as there's a sack for the Bills, and that's Rondell Bothroy, the undrafted rookie out of Oklahoma. Got him down with one. I thought they might call him for a horse collar, but what got him going to the ground? He's going to come right from the top, gets around, nice rush, and that was a one-handed sack. Good for him. That's could have been a horse collar, and I don't know why that might in the pocket. I guess that's okay. But yes, that is a really nice pass rush. Now, the Panthers kicker, Eddie Pinheiro, is out for the rest of the game with an injury, so this would have been a long field goal, but it's not an option for the Panthers, who do call a timeout. Yeah. But let's just finish on Mac and show up in time okay let us know first and 10 technology presented by toyota the official car and truck of the buffalo bills that opener is fast approaching week one against the arizona cardinals and then a quick turnaround week two on the road thursday night in miami brown to davidson and stacked up immediately <laughs> Davidson having a nice second half of this game here. He's been targeted by Brown. I, I say this, I've said this before too with quarterbacks. I've, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of quarterbacks, and they'll all tell you if they get their opportunity, they have a guy that helps them. And it seems like Anthony Brown has found Zach Davidson, and that seems to be his guy. Doesn't mean he's not going to throw it to anybody else, but when push comes to shove, he knows that guy catches it when he throws it. Anthony Brown signed on Tuesday and has played the entire second half here today. And another completion to Xavier Johnson. And that's going to be good for a Buffalo first down. Both these quarterbacks, Ben DiNucci and Anthony Brown, it's interesting, Matty told us they work out together. So there is a comfort level. 
and even between series, when they come out, either one, they'll both sit there and talk to each other, and they can have conversations that other guys in that situation wouldn't be able to have. And it seems as though, you know, they seem to be really comfortable in this offense, and maybe being here together has helped them. Brown is nine out of ten for 69 yards. Frank Gore Jr. Another carry, and now he is hobbling. Oh no! Down on the ground and in some pain, and Sean McDermott comes right out to attend to Frank Gore Jr. And that's the last thing you want to see. Yeah. Late in the fourth quarter of the last preseason game, and you can see his left knee got spun. Yeah, it got landed on as he went down. It didn't look like it got bent awkwardly. But that never tells you the whole story. He's up. That's a good sign. Looks like he's... Looks pretty good. Yeah. Now, that said, I don't believe that the Bills have another running back that they can turn to here. Well, they're not going to put James Cook no, well, in the I'm game. No, I'm not saying they should. Uh, and the, but available for this game, and, of course, Gore's trying to walk this off. And that's part of. Uh, for a regular NFL team is 100%. Everybody gets injured at some point. It's just the way it is. Some of them are very minor, and some of them you never hear about. But every single guy has discomfort that he needs to play with. Brown dumps this one down. That's Demir Bird with his first catch as a Bill. Some nice spin moves and then shoved out of bounds. The former Carolina Panther picks up 19. Yeah, Demir Bird did a nice job. And I'll say this too, he got a little something extra from his former teammate. If indeed if they played together, watch as he gets out. He's going to take a cross shot right there. That's a little something extra right there that the official actually ran out. Take a goal line football. Shorter. Take a KJ Hamler, the big truck in the backfield, <laughs> scoring a touchdown. All 5'9", 178 of them. And the Bills turning to Hamler to run the football, and he takes it in. Yeah, he went in there like uh, he meant business, didn't he? Uh, this is not easy to do. It takes some courage because you're running in there with some very, very big, mean dudes. Hamler didn't even flinch. He went in there like he meant it, like he owned the joint, and he made it. One of the unexpected twists of the summer, K.J. Hamler, the backup wide receiver, taking over as Buffalo running back and scoring a rushing touchdown as the extra point by Bass is good. And the reason Hamler is at running back was because of the injury to Frank Gore Jr. Matty has more on Gore. Running back Frank Gore and safety D. Delaney are both out with knee injuries. For Frank Gore, it's a left knee injury. He was touching the side of it, trying to put pressure on it as he was talking to two different athletic trainers. So Tyler Bass will kick it away. This one bounces at the five into the end zone and out of the end zone. And there's a difference between bouncing out of the end zone and downing it in the end zone. Well, we want to give a special shout out. Your favorite teams through his lens for a lot of years. Congratulations on a great career. Thanks, John. Now, Sean McDermott is calling a timeout. With 1.55 to go. That will give them a chance if the this entire summer once again calling Bills preseason games. This is the finale with 150 to go. Plummer throwing and it is caught and that appears to be good enough for a first down as Coker makes the catch in front of Kyron Brown. That will do it. And now the Panthers can just take a knee. And the Bills forcing him to get that first down to put this game away. And that's that's the story of the preseason. Good and bad. It's not over until it's over. So Buffalo will finish the preseason with a one and two record. 
We had general manager Brandon Bean join us in the third quarter in the booth. A busy few days ahead for him and his staff as the Bills have to get down to a 53-man roster by 4 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. The next day they can set their practice squad, and as Brandon told us, then with a 1,000 players flooding the free agent market, maybe there's someone. Uh, and yet, you know, you never know which guys are going to be coveted by other teams that are ahead of you on the waiver wire list. So you kind of have to wait and see, but you still put in the bids, even though you might not have a shot at those guys. So Dave Canales and Sean McDermott shake hands. Quick little chat before heading off the field as both teams now can gear up for the regular season opener and we'll see what lies ahead for this man. Joe Andreessen after a phenomenal summer. What does the future hold?